I'm so so I got a couple uh, shortcuts that I took today with regards to some of this stuff. The king of worksheets, yes. <laughs> um, cool. Hi, Kyla. Hi, Jyothi. Um, all right, awesome. So we'll get started here. I'm gonna share my screen. This is kind of a you know a worksheets based one. I know that we're not going away from them in any way, shape, or form, and and nor should we because they're effective. But I want to make sure that uh, we spend a touch of time here sort of looking at, at how we can bring them, uh, how we can use some of the Google tools to bring them at, at sort of a little bit more advanced here. I'm gonna mute you, Thompson. You're, you got your mic on, so. There you go. <laughs> um, cool, so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll, we'll jump right into this. I tried to look at it in both ends here. I tried to look at it both from a elementary point of view and what we could do with that. Um, and also from a high school point of view and what we could do with that. I have a couple of videos that I will share out after the fact here um, that, that I pulled a lot of the info from and I think that they're gonna walk through some of the details maybe a little bit better or maybe I won't, maybe I'll, I'll cover it all well enough here. So, so this is one I pulled for an elementary. This is a PDF I grabbed from online. It is not mine. This is from great schools in any way, shape or form. But I wanted to start out with uh, how to use TextHelp's PDF Reader uh, to get started with it. I, I think that this is a, a, an interesting tool, uh, specifically if our students have uh, touch screens of any way, shape, or form. So the nice thing about the PDF Reader, this is by the same people that do uh, Read and Write, is you don't, you on your end don't have to do anything. You can just assign the PDF. Again, I'm gonna make the assumption that we're using Google Classroom or we're assigning this in some manner there. Uh, so if you're not, I apologize up front. There's a few differences that you may see in here, but the nice thing about the PDF reader is it does have this freehand drawing tool. So I know that's horrible, but so the kids can draw over top of it. So if you want them to identify specific parts of what's going on, you can have that in there. We can use the exact same format in uh, Google Classroom where we make a copy for each student and then have that, them do all the response here. And in fact, up in the top corner, you can actually connect this with your classroom. So if you are annotating over a PDF and you wanna share those with the students, it can be all done inside of here. So, and we can spend some additional time. I know that some people are using other ones. Some people are using Kami. Some people are using some additional ones and then printing as a PDF to attach it. That's also a super valid way to do it. The other nice one that I like here, and, and this is in a lot of the PDF editing ones, this is uh, just the one I choose, is the typewriter tool. The typewriter tool allows us to come down into the text and type the answer that we are, and we'll go on and on whatever we want. Um, and once we have that in there, we can start to adjust the text size. Oops, let's make it bigger so that it's the right size and we can adjust the location of that text. So for our students, they too can make use of this tool. This, this is a free, the PDF re reader is free. So we're looking at that cloud-based solution that is free for our kids. Um, it also incorporates the uh, read and write tools inside of it. So play is going to play our um, the response that we have there, predictive text. So kind of your autocorrect keyboard, it doesn't actually correct. And you can also use the talk and type, the speech to text to get it in there. So, and if you don't like it, you just delete it, right? We'll leave that one in there. We can move that around after the fact, but that is one method that that potentially could be used. And, and this is one, so, you know, least barrier of entry, but potentially the most uh, expectations on the student end. Um, I jumped in and I said, okay, the next step I think with regards to this is to make them a little bit more interactive. So in order to make them more interactive, I'm gonna focus on Google Slides for this. Google Slides because it integrates so nicely uh, with that G Suite um, ecosystem and also because uh, we have the functionality to apply it to Classroom, make a copy for all of our students and use it very effectively in there. One of the big suggestions that I found when we're doing specifically worksheet-based stuff is to adjust the file size, or sorry, the page size. So we're gonna go into file and then down to page setup. By default, it's set to widescreen or it could be set to standard. I'm gonna jump down to custom and make this, uh, I think we wanna go, um, what are we, eight and a half by 11, right? So let's go eight by 10.5, oops. 
10.5 to make sure it fits on our standard uh, page. We apply that and it gives us a page that if we were to print these out, would print on one standard page if there was a reason to do that. The other nice thing is any of the PDFs that we have that we want to make use of, we can apply those as a background without it being skewed uh, because we do have the right settings inside of here. Now, what I wanted to do, I jumped on and I was just looking on PDF converters because I couldn't find a nice way to print directly from PDF to a JPEG. Uh, and this is where I'm gonna say I cheated is about half an hour ago, I started looking for this and I just stumbled across this one. I haven't done any of the security uh, lookings into it. So I don't know if it stores a copy of, of my files or anything like that. It is something that I need to look into and I'm gonna do a bit deeper of an exploring to see if I can come up with a PDF to JPEG or PDF to image solution. But I did convert one of these. So what I'm gonna do is just right click on there and go to change background. And we can upload inside of here i have it in my testing grounds i changed it to a jpeg and it's going to drop that in there the reason i like to use that background is because now it looks like that standard page but my students can't edit that they can click on it as much as we want when we make a copy for them but they can't change that background so any of the content that i have back there is is set in gold right it's all set um one of the suggestions we're going to look at a little bit later is to create a pdf or sorry, create a slide, export that one slide as your background and then re-import it as the background. So it kind of gives you that, it allows you the flexibility to do that same idea. The only thing inside of here, the only reason I wanted to bring this in was because right here we have our text area where we want our students to respond. I'm gonna actually bring in a shape. I'm gonna just bring in a nice square here. We're gonna go back into here. We're gonna change our background. Uh, we got that selected. So we're gonna go into our background up here. We're gonna make it nice and white, or maybe we do wanna draw attention to it, in which case we could uh, change it to anything. I'm gonna double click inside there to put our text inside there and write, I'm gonna keep this fairly standard. Um, insert, or let's go. Type your answer here. One of the suggestions that I found is in order to differentiate this to make sure that the students know, maybe you want to put in double uh, double click to edit. So double click to edit, and it could be done as well. There's a whole bunch of different suggestions here, but one of the key things that they said is take those and change your text color. So change it to something that the kids are definitely going to see. And so you know when it comes time for it, it's going to be easy to, for you to identify their work, right? The other nice thing about this is if the students just go and they find the answer somewhere, um, we'll just go to CBC, like Old Faithful here. And uh, sorry if the content's no good. And they just copy and paste. So we do a control C and then they're like, right on, we're just going to throw our answer in here and they double click and paste it in there, it's gonna come up with a different color and a different uh, font. So they're probably gonna spend more time monkeying around with that to get it to work, right? If they were gonna copy and paste. So it's just a, another label where you can say, hey, I know what you did here. So simple one there, just to add that text box in, and then you can assign that to each of the students. We don't need to worry about putting their name or the date or anything like that on that. That's all digitally added by Google Classroom. So we're all good there. So that was a nice one uh, that I thought is an easy one to fix here. I grabbed one, uh, this isn't what I want here. I grabbed one, this was more of, uh, again, these are these are two science examples, but I think they could be applicable to any of our, our classes. This is an example of a, some cricket science that was going on in one of the, the, the uh, biology classes that I was looking at here. A couple things to note is right away, you can get rid of some of this content up top you know if you're assigning it with Google Classroom, the student's name, it's gonna be attached because we're gonna use the create a copy for every student. And you know which class that they're a part of. So you can eliminate that right off the bat. This was came from another, uh, it actually came from a Microsoft uh, document that I brought in. So we'll change the formatting there to match it up. 
But one of the pieces that you may want to consider as you're using this is in order to keep your formatting fairly consistent and fairly uh, in line with what you want to do is to bring in um, using tables. So if we take a look at this, maybe we want, you know, we have our background, we have our this, and then we want our student input. So maybe what we're going to do right here, we'll just move that to the next page, is we're just going to insert that table and just two sections, one section for us and then the next section for the student. Paste it in there clean it up a little bit and it should be good to go. Then we can put that next uh, step for the students. A little bit more difficult because we have that if then statement, but maybe we wanna say, you know, just use an if then statement to respond to whichever it is, right? We could then, uh, we could then make this a different color, bold it and bring our different color into here as well just to make sure or to answer just to give the students some direction on where we want to have their work going um really quickly if you're working in tables here and you don't like those hard back or those hard borders around it if you highlight more than one table you'll see that there's a little drop down menu that shows up in the right hand side if you click on that it will say what borders do you want to change in this case if we just want to change the outside borders we're going to click on that. It highlights our outside borders. And then up in our toolbar, we get our adaptive menu. So we can change the type of border. Again, excuse me, I wouldn't necessarily change that. We can change the thickness if we want to differentiate a little bit more there. Uh, we can go down to zero font if we want to eliminate it. Or we can jump over into our line style and we can just say, just make it a white one. And then we, we've kind of eliminated that and make it a little bit easier to see. Still have that differentiation between these two as well so something simple when you're working with tables as well slide down to the next one here's another one that's super simple to work with the tables just adding those additional features into here and again we can't really lock it down but to give that table for the students to enter and again using the type your answer here change that color gives us the ability to sort of differentiate and once we and, and let them know where we want our answer. Once we have that, we can just copy and paste it wherever, oops, wherever we need to. So really quickly, if you are copying from a third party source, so you're copying from somewhere else and you don't like that the fonts come in all wacky, just copy this one again. You don't like that the fonts come in all wacky like this, uh, that one actually worked out okay. Um, what we could do is if you do control shift V instead of just control V, it will follow whatever formatting you already have in place. So if you already have it formatted with a specific type of font, a specific bolding or format or something like that, it will follow that formatting. So just when you start moving stuff around from one page to another or from say Microsoft Word into here, you're importing it by copying and pasting. That's a great way to, to make use of that. Down here, the next little step of this is a graph that we want the kids to do. Difficult if we don't have a touch screen or if we're asking them to draw. I am no good drawing with a uh, trackpad, but let's get rid of this graph right here and let's insert one of our own. So we're gonna insert a drawing. Google Drawings is essentially Google Slides in one single slide. It is one slide of a Google slide. You can create Google Drawings on your own, going to drawing.google.com, or we can jump right into this guy and insert it right inside of our page. So I actually went and found um, some grid paper here. I just did a quick search. It came from Wikipedia, so I figured we're okay to use it. Maybe we want to make sure that we give those credits down below. Maybe this is something where you create your own copy, create an image of it, and then you don't have to give those credits. When I jump into this, I'm just gonna go copy image address down here. I like to just use the image address and import it from there, but you can bring it in in whichever manner you want. Oops, we're gonna go back to our Cricut Science and we're gonna go up to the insert an image. Insert by URL and select. Our image is in there now. 
Um, please be aware that it needs to be a PNG or a JPEG or something like that. This PNG, this is a PNG file, which means it has a transparent background in this case. Uh, and so we do have that. When we bring it into our actual um, document, you're going to see it looks like a white background, but that's because it's tra transparent. If you wanted to do a white background behind here, because you thought the students were uh, needed to see that white background instead of little squares, just throw one in. Just use a uh, just use that diagram. Right click on it, and you can go to order and send it backwards. It's going to send it to the very back, and then we'll take that color and we'll change it to white. So now we have that background here. Um, be careful with the more stuff that you add because if your kids aren't used to it, they they can manipulate this. So they can grab these and move them around. So just need to be aware that when we're asking our kids to do that, we give them a little bit of instruction on how to do that. The other thing I would suggest here, let's just grab a quick text box and throw it up in the corner and just say, double click to edit this graph. some horrible editing there but we'll adjust that right we'll throw that up here so again we've provided them some address some uh direction so within that spreadsheet they're able to double click it and maybe one of the other bits that we want to do is we want to pre-create so we don't see a bunch of smiley faces or a bunch of really goofy icons maybe we want to pre-create a circle for them to plot on this graph so if we just drag a circle we can get an oval if you hold the shift when you drag in that circle, it will create a perfect circle. So maybe we want to create a nice small circle here. And let's fill the inside with black. We'll move that into here. And we're going to bring in another text box and say copy and paste this uh, dot for your points. And Mr. Thompson, if the power went out, you just let us know, buddy, and we'll uh, we'll make sure that we send somebody over your way. Okay, something simple, something easy here where we can bring that in and uh, and make it easy for the kids. If we were going to ask them to do some access stuff, I don't think it hurts because to to put some of those definitions where it's you know copy or double click this, edit this to label your x axis or your y axis or something like that. Just because our our goal. Uh, in some cases, depending, I guess it depends on what the goal is. But if our goal is to uh, get them labeling, then we want to give them the graph and ask them to edit the labels. If our goal is to get them graphing, maybe we want to give them the labels and ask them to edit the graph. When we do save and close that, it's in here. It's nice and neat. And the kids can now double click on that and they can start doing that. Maybe we want to bring a little bit more attention to this up here, uh, to the ability to double click. Assigning that through Google Classroom is going to make a copy for each of our kids. No big deal here. Down below here, we have a written response style question. I'm just gonna bring that to the next page. And maybe what we wanna do in this case is use, uh, instead of these lines, we're just gonna copy and get this out of here. We'll delete all of this content here. Insert a table just two spaces. Our top one is going to be our part here. And our bottom one, we're going to drag that down because we want the kids to write more than just one line in here, right? If they see one line, maybe they're only going to want, want to write one line. So maybe we're going to ask them to write multiple lines in here. And then again, going into insert or type your answer here. just so we know, right? So information is there and easy to go, easy to get that data into there. Um, those are kind of my, my creation tips uh, with regards to doing, uh, creating some of those worksheets. I think, and uh, sorry, I did mention one other piece here. Uh, let's jump into this. We have our full screen page. Maybe we're gonna add another slide. We're going to change the layout to this to a blank slide. And maybe we want to format this page as a, uh, or we'll, we'll change the formatting on this whole thing. We want to change our page setup to a widescreen, perhaps for a reason. 
it is going to apply it to the whole slideshow so you're going to see this one get skewed but now we have that widescreen sort of format remember we had talked about using um using a background creating a background to to make a background if you notice here i got uh when i put these in this blue line turns to red so your google slides will give you some indicators when you start working with those we're going to change this to a slightly bigger we're going to change it to a black line we're going to change it to eight point to make it nice and big i'm going to copy and paste four of those i'm going to bring them down into our corners maybe this is a vocabulary sheet that we want the kids to do so we're going to put that information in the middle and it's going to allow us to put some information up here. So maybe we want a description for our the word, the vocabulary word that they're going to put inside of there. We're going to take that. We're going to make sure our alignment's on the top. On this one, maybe we want a sentence. And we're going to take that and we're going to make sure our alignment is on the bottom so we can sort of differentiate. We could do these ones as well, right? I, I will just leave those blank for the time being. I'm going to grab another shape. I'm going to grab, in this case, we'll use one of these guys. To make sure that we have it centered, let's put it in the middle here. And we're going to move it up and down to make sure it's all fit. Now let's right click on it and let's go down to format options. Format options is going to let us set the size if we have a specific size that we want to use it. So for example, maybe four is okay, but maybe we only want it to be one inch high. We have to realign that because we just want our word inside of here. And now we've kind of have something set up where maybe we type in here vocabulary word and we'd want to change that. Let's put that in the center and let's put that in the middle. And maybe we want to make that a little bit bigger. We're going to get this template all set up. Actually, we're going to leave this one out because we're going to make this into a background. We're going to change that background into white. And now we have something that maybe we want to create as a template with a background that's not editable for the students. So we're going to print this. We're going to export it or download as a JPEG current slide. Now that we have that, maybe we want to keep this, maybe this is in our template slide. So maybe we have a slide presentation that is all of our templates. So as we make adjustments to them, we know that we have multiple slides inside of there. Um, what we want to do, so I wouldn't put it into the same one. We're going to bring in another slide. We're going to change the background of this slide. to be exactly what we have. So again, the kids can't edit that. We do want them to put something inside of here. So maybe we grab that text block and we put that inside here and we start to give them directions on what we want them to edit and the information that we want them to put into there. So this could be vocabulary word or something like that. Or maybe we create some text blocks up here that allow them to put the different uh, content and different pieces in here. Um, we could also, add a little image if we wanted here to you know reset this image to an image that describes your vocabulary word or something like that but essentially it's just you know making use of sort of the tools that we have available to us if our students are working online and how to make those how to make those tools work best for us without having to recreate absolutely everything we're doing so i am uh i'm gonna stop there and uh that's kind of the content that I have. I wasn't going to go super deep into this. I hope that it addressed sort of the, some of the ideas that you had, but let me know if there's something that you need or if you have some ideas. And I know that we have a, we have a fairly small group. We got eight in here. Um, if you guys have some content, some ideas that you're using in your classroom, let it know. I'm sure the other seven would appreciate hearing about it. So, And if not, I'll stop the recording and uh, I'll give you back five minutes of your life. <laughs>